Hello, everyone, and welcome to Speak Up Sis Talk Radio. I'm your host, Angel Charmaine, and this is the place where authors, especially Christian authors, have an opportunity to share the word of their testimony through their books to inspire the stories of others. Welcome back into the space. It has been a minute since I've been here with you all and an author, but I've got an amazing guest here today. Her book is awesome. We're actually reading it right now in the Speak Up Says Bookshelf book club. And people are finishing reading it. People are like, this is a great book. This is amazing. Um, I am almost through. I had I was up like in the middle of the night, just like reading, reading, reading. Um, so I am excited to have author and life coach Tanya Williams here in the building. How you doing, sis? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Now, you know, I'm t- listen. I'm trying to get get myself together. I was telling Tanya before um, I before we came on that I am always nervous, y'all. Every time I turn the camera on, I am always nervous. I don't know if I'm ever gonna not be nervous doing this, but I bless God that um, that I get an opportunity to do it. So, talk to us. Tell us a little bit about who is Tanya. Well, you know, I really didn't know who Tanya was until, you know, really just a few years ago. I was kind of like everybody else. I was a mom. I was a wife. I worked full time. And, you know, I just really wanted something of my own. Mm -hmm. And ministry became my outlet. And it's just something I absolutely love. And um, I got heavily involved in church and, um, I even went to ministry school and things like that, but I really felt that God was calling me outside four walls and I didn't really even know what that was. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, wait a minute, God, I've really just gotten used to how the church works. Now you're calling me outside four walls. So um, as I began the process, I was halfway through school. I started a podcast and um, yes. And so um, I named it Fierce, Fairly and Spiritually Grounded. So I Mm -hmm. talked about subjects that were everyday life experiences that people go through, but things that the church really shies away from and they don't like to talk about. Uh And I would apply some biblical principles to it and then some steps as a life coach would to help them, you know, get through them. Well, as I went through that process, God started to speak to me about life coaching. Mm -hmm. And really that's my passion and that's my ministry. And um, I've really just become a transformational life coach to teach people really to become the best version of themselves and that you don't have to be perfect to have um, your life together to serve God or even, you know, we all have things about ourselves that we want to correct or fix. So that's really what I do. And that's really who I've become. I've just really become this person who likes to motivate, inspire and help others. Right. I can tell. I, I watch your page once we got connected and you listed your book on the on the bookshelf. One thing that people don't realize is that I actually pay attention. I'm watching. Uh, (laughs) I, I, I believe in divine connections. I believe that God strategically and divinely places us in in spaces with people we're supposed to connect with and i don't like attachments so i pay attention to people and so i was watching you you're always smiling you're always dancing i think your husband's a dj or vj or something like that and so you're always just really upbeat and very positive really good energy so i was like okay I like her. (laughs) I like her. But are you saying that were you not always like that? No, no. I God has really done a 360 on me. Um, I was always behind the scenes. I didn't Mm -hmm. like to talk in front of people. I was very shy. I was very quiet. Like even at family functions, I would just kind of be quiet into myself. I wasn't rude and not speak, but I was just quiet. And, you know, my mother-in-law tells me all the time, she's like, I can't even believe you're the same person because the person I knew is not the person you are today. 
That's what's so it's, up. It's just really amazing because I guess I went from like a non people person to now uh -huh. a people person. Right. I so I'm trying to to pace myself because I really want to tell them all about the book because okay. I don't want to tell them all about the book because I want them to go get the book, the book and read the book. But I kind of want to tell them all about the book because I cause, listen. OK, so here's the book, everybody. <laughs> Y'all already know. So first thing I have the ebook version and I have the paperback tangible copy because. I'm not sure if you knew this, but I'm I'm an educator. I've been an educator for 20 years. I taught English. There's something about being able to mark up the pages. I, I just love it. So I I'm actually, I got old school, right? I got <laughs> notes and everything. And I'm going to tell you, can we be candid? Absolutely. There were some spaces in here that really stopped me um places that i didn't think would stop me um that when i got to them i was like <laughs> hmm she really gonna force me <laughs> to do to that <laughs> really deal with some things um when you talk about um obviously we can see that that you're a white woman and you talk about a situation where you have family members who don't really do, you know, the whole black people thing. And then you keep reading and you got pictures and things. And then you see that, you know, you married. <laughs> and you tell the stories. And I'm going to tell you, as a black woman, reading this book, there were so many feelings that I had in the life stories. And because when you're reading a book, you're trying to connect with the protagonist. And so there were pieces where I'm like, oh, our stories are so similar. And then I was like, mm -mm, I can't <laughs> relate to this. Or, you know, when I tell you this was an experience, for me it it is an experience for me and i think it's a beautiful experience because as a black woman i tend to read um memoirs uh biographies autobiographies um transformational stories by other black women mm -hmm. it was something to read a book like my book but from a white woman Oh, I love that. that thing messed me up in the middle of the night. What? Um, yes, it did. And I'm telling you, you all, you, you got to read it because I said, and I found myself at some points looking for ways to say we're different. Uh-huh. And, and I was like, no, nah, that's not like your story right there. Yeah. That over there sound like you too. Yep, you did that too. <laughs> yeah. So listen, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Did you do you ever think about like your book says the 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 best version of me? Did it ever cross your mind that you would have women from all different backgrounds and races of women, nationalities of women who are going to be reading this looking up looking for the best version of themselves and finding that they're very similar to you. Did you, did you ever think about that? Like, that? That was my goal, that whoever picked up the book, that they could take something from it because we all have that mindset that, you know, we're not good enough or we're in bondage to shame and the things that's happened to us. We tend to let that take on our identity. And so when I started writing the book, I didn't even know what I was going to write about, how it was going to go. And I was just like, okay, God, you've given me this vision about this book. So you're going to have to write this book. You're going to have to tell me what you want me to share, what you want me to say. And he did just that. And in my mind, um, 
it was really just if it helps one person, then my assignment was complete. Right. But I really hope that it would open the eyes to people to 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 connect, not necessarily, um, you know, to look at our differences, but like you said, to look how we're alike and, yeah. you know, to take off the mask and the color. And, you know, I even had a, um, a guy to inbox me today and told me that he read the book and, you know, when he bought it, I didn't really think any guys would read it. I right. told my husband, but it's, it's a friend of my husband and he just wanted to support his, you mm -hmm. know, friend's wife. So he purchased the book and he said he started reading and he fell into it and couldn't put it down. Right. And he, he even said that, you know, that uh, for him as a man, he could relate and it helped him to understand women a little bit better and what mm -hmm. they went through and why we act the way we do and things right. like that. So, you know, I'm, I feel that it was successful that if it's touching people in that way and they can relate and get something out of it, then that's all that I hope to have accomplished. Yeah. And well, it's totally doing that. And um, like I said, when you talk about God girls, I'm, my face is probably in a dictionary <laughs> somewhere like God girl, Angel Charmaine. <laughs> and even I was accosted by some of the things that I read even I had to wrestle with some heart stuff, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And to get to the best version of myself, it, it is crazy to look, read somebody else's story thinking you're going to get something else. And then God says, mm -mm, look at that right there. Mm, that right good. there, deal with that. That's oh, and I'm telling you in the middle of the night, I was like, not tonight. Not <laughs> Um, I mean, really, this is what we're doing tonight, Jesus, really? Because so, there's always a root to everything. Yes. We have a tendency to sweep it under the rug and say, well, you know, if I just forget about it, it'll go away. Right. But it doesn't. It comes up in other ways, in other forms, in other areas. And then by then, it's just like a volcano. You yes. can't control it. Yes, I agree. I agree. So I want to talk about something else. You and I kind of briefly um, chatted about this before getting on. And it's something that I also face as, as an author. Um, so right now I've written three books. I've self-published three books. But the very first one, I like to say it was my do it scared <laughs> Thing, experience. I've done a lot of things scared. I did but... everything scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, listen, I've done a lot of things that other people are like, I don't know how you did it because I wouldn't have. And I'm like, oh, girl, you can just do it. But there was something different about putting my business, right? Mm -hmm in writing on the page and putting it out there for other people to pick apart if they wanted to. But um, it's freeing also. It, it's it is freeing. Like you can be the best version of yourself because you have nothing to hide. Exactly. Exactly. So you said you did this scared. Did you know anything about writing or writing a book or publishing or any of that before you started? Girl, no, I haven't known anything about anything that I have done up to this point. The podcast, the writing, the speaking, you know, the only thing I knew was ministry. And I had just really grasped that. Like even the life coach, and I had never even heard of what a life coach was, you know, and I've just really embraced everything that God has given me to do and been obedient in it. And just done my research. Google has become my best friend. Like I okay. literally, yeah, I literally Googled when I started my podcast, how to start a podcast. What mm -hmm. should I talk about? Should I have an introduction? How long it should be? What days of the week should, you know, all those things. And um, I mean, technology is great. So there's no excuse in this day and time to not be able to do something because you don't know how. Right. Um, you may not know people, but your people know people. And if you have any kind of electronic device, you can figure out how to do anything. Pretty much. These teenagers can do all these TikToks and YouTube. Okay. I mean, we can do anything we set our mind to. We really can. So let's take just a moment because we've got some guests in the okay. space 
today. And I would like to just kind of take a look at what they have to say to you. So let's see okay. here. Um, and y'all excuse me. I'm, I'm going to put my glasses on this. Put my glasses on so I can read. Um, it looks like, hey, Tamika, I see you in the building. Watching from you too. She says, good evening, everyone. Hello, beautiful queens. How you doing, sis? It's good to see you. Merit Latanya says, yes. I don't know what she's saying. Yes, too. Maybe that's she my best friend. That's my best friend. Oh, that's your best friend. My best friend. <laughs> um, Roosevelt, boy. okay, your husband. That's is my husband. That, that, that's the best, best friend, right? Yeah, that's best friend. He says, hello, everyone. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's an awesome book. Uh, we've got Mary Roberts. She says, good evening, everyone. Um, Tamika, what she says, I love her page. Yes, always smiling, and I love it. I was jamming to his blue session over the weekend. Yes. Yeah, makes the dream work. <laughs> um, Tamika says, um, mine is crazy with notes and stuff highlighted. So Tamika is a part of the Speak Up Sis book club, and she's already finished reading your book, and she's got so much to say about it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, hold on a second. We've got all kind of people talking in here tonight. <laughs> Um, Belinda says, this is a good conversation. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you for showing up. Um, Courtney says, hey there, Sister Kimfo. <laughs> um, I love the transparency of you both. So, so I'm glad you, you use that word transparency, Tamika. One thing that, that I have learned, and I think you can attest to this as well, is that in order to grow, in order to get to the best version of yourself, you've got to be willing to be vulnerable, transparent, and honest. And I believe people use those words interchangeably and, and they mean very different things. Yeah. But transparency, allowing people to be able to see you mm -hmm. see through the representative, right? Through all of the other stuff, through all of the defense mechanisms and have, have this clear, you know, uh, view to, to you. Has that been difficult for you to be so transparent in your writing? Um, I don't think so. I think for me, the transparency came in, um, during church. I, mm -hmm. I was, in some settings, I was taught that you're a leader. You're supposed to act like you have it all together. Don't let people know that you have issues. And mm -hmm. I just couldn't rock with that because I was like, that's a lie, you know? Yeah. And in order to relate to people, you have to be real yeah. and you, you have to be transparent. And I was like, well, how am I going to relate to people if I act like I have it all together? Yeah. So that has really been a lot of, I'm very bold in in my teachings and the stuff that i do and um so transparency is easy for me because i feel like if i had to go through it to help somebody else then it was worth it and i think right. being transparent is how we heal the more we talk about it the more we heal from it the more we keep it bottled up the more we suffer and we're just self-sabotaging ourselves exactly mary roberts is on here how you doing uh mary She's also um, a bookshelf author, and she says something all the time that I'm always repeating. She always says, um, uh, 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 what is it? Cover, uh, covered things can't get healed. Mm. And, and it's the truth. If you're not willing to uncover it, if you're not al allowing that thing to come to, you know, get some air and, and get to the light, it, you're not going to be able to 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 heal from it, and Sometimes if you're not, you just got to rip the bandaid off. You have to rip it off, right? And God tells us that we can't even communicate with Him properly outside of being in the Spirit and being truthful. Yep. So if you're not willing to be transparent, you're definitely not going to be honest, right? right. So that's what's up. Let's see here. 
Let's put these glasses back. I'm telling you, there's so many <laughs> comments tonight that I am trying. I want to make sure that um, that we get to see the people. How about that? Okay. Um, how you doing, Deborah? Deborah says hello. Um, Teresa says uh, that's my that's my mom. Hey, mom. Oh, that's your mama. Hi. <laughs> Listen, we one thing you're gonna learn and speak up, sis world we <laughs> love mamas honey yes. every morning we do the morning show for believers my mom comes on and we sing a song so i'm i'm gonna sing a song for your mama miss Teresa. <laughs> come on in the room <laughs> come on in the room <laughs> jesus is my <laughs> and he writes out all of my prescriptions. He gives me all my medicine in my room. That's oh, take us to church. Take us to church. <laughs> <laughs> we love mamas and speak up sis. Thank you for for popping on tonight. Um, how you doing, Janice? She says, love me some Tanya. That's what's up. <laughs> Belinda, you know what's up. <laughs> she said, y'all ain't singing. That's right. Come on in the room. All right. So listen, I want to um, I want you to share a little bit about you as a life coach as well, because you're not just an author, but you're also a life coach. Do you use your book? in your coaching process because you have tips and things in here as well actually the book was inspired from the podcast and life coaching so my okay. podcast I, like i said i talk about everyday life situations i try to give a scripture or a verse because i want them to get that little bit of bible without you know feeling like i'm beating them over the head with it but also i give them tips on how to maybe get through whatever their situation is so that's really how the book came together. I just kind of took the spin off of the podcast and my life coach and, and done that. But really, that's just how I coach. I coach, um, like I said, it's transformational coaching. But um, some of the things that I coach in is uh, financial, relational, and spiritual, um, because those are like the three areas that I really struggled with. And I don't believe in coaching in something that I don't know about. You know, I feel like, right. again, that's a lie. I like to coach about things that I've experienced myself. So I can say, I can relate to you and say, hey, I've been there. This is how right. I got through it. It may not work for you, but at least gives you a free blueprint on how to get through it. You know, and I'm very honest and I say, you know, I don't know. I've never experienced that, but I'm connected to other coaches. This person can help you. I don't believe in taking people's money if I can't help them. Yeah. And that, and that's honest and that's operating in a spirit of integrity. So I like that. I like that you said financial coaching. That's something that, um, even in the book, I noticed that was one of those moments I had in the book where you were like, I, my mama, she did. Lisa, right. Um, help me out with that financial thing. She taught me some things about money. And that was one of those things where I had a moment with my own personal self. And I was like, you know, that's something that I know as a black woman, that is, that's something that we typically mm -hmm. don't get. And I'm sure if you're coaching a lot of, um, you know, black American right. women, that's probably a, a huge issue is that managing money, yes. not, not ever really having been taught you know, how to budget uh, or balance a, a checkbook and things of that nature. So do you get a lot of people that you work with who need that type of help? I do. And, you know, we started very young with our kids teaching them. I think they were 10 mm -hmm. uh, when we taught them, but we set them down. We, I know people don't write checks anymore or do a ledger or anything like that, but we taught them that stuff anyway. <laughs> and we gave them scenarios, scenarios like we gave them an allowance and, you know, pretend like you're in college. This is how much money you had to work with. Well, guess what? 
you need groceries and you've had two flat tires this week, you know, so it's going to cost this amount of money. Mm -hmm. And as, as they started getting older, I noticed that, um, they would take advantage of us buying these $70 video games. They would step on them and break them. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. So uh -huh. I was just like, if you want it, you're going to have to earn it. So we taught them how to sell stuff on eBay or how to, um, you know, go trade in the old ones to get money. And they, they made an allowance to make up the rest and they could not get a new one until they had the money to buy it themselves. But what I learned in that is they took better care of it when they had to pay for it themselves. And, you know, we would even find ways in the store, like when they say, mom, I want this $80 polo shirt. I would say, do you want to spend your $80 on it? They'd be like, mm, no. And I said, well, neither do I hang it back up. <laughs> So, you know, so every everything is a teachable moment. You right. just have to be aware and be in that moment with them. Right. But, but yes, I've encountered that a lot. Who's who's the um, who's the more strict in your in your in your house? You or Dad with the kids when it comes to money? Well, you know they're both really good with money, honestly. Uh -huh. um, my husband, he's a great saver. You know, he's one of those people that won't spend money on himself, even uh -huh. if he needs it, you know, but the kids, because we taught them at an early age, mm -hmm. I think the youngest one is 14. He's got money saved from uh, his last birthday, wow. uh, which was June. So they're both very good with money. The oldest one is about to turn 20 mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he works two jobs. He saves his money. He has a pretty fat savings account already. Okay. And, you know, so, and, and I, another thing, here's a free tip that we did with them. Um, when they, but when they turn 16 without them knowing, I add them to one of my credit cards. Mm -hmm. So it builds up their credit. Well, probably about six months ago, I told my oldest son, you know, he has one semester left of school, so he'll be looking to move out probably, you know, the next year or so. And there's going to be things he wants to do. Well, I don't want to co-sign. I don't want to have to get right. your electricity in my name. Right. So I told him, I said, you know, I want you to check your credit. And he's like, what's that? And I was just like, you know, I had to explain to him what it was. And he looked and I think his credit score was like 746. Oh, go and ahead. was like, what? He's like, how's his credit score like that? He's like, he don't need us for anything. Boy, you can buy your own car and That's everything. Because his mama's smart. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was, you know, and he told me, he's like, my friend, my cousin went to go buy a car and he didn't even have credit. You know, his mom had to um, co-sign and things like that. But my husband is most definitely the strictest <laughs> when, when it comes to money. Uh, you know, women, we give freely. He he gets mad because, um, you know, if somebody says, hey, I like that shirt. I'll just say, oh, well, here, you can have it. And he says, well, now you got to turn around and you'll go buy another one. <laughs> but, you know, I'm the giver. So he's right. definitely the strictest. Okay. But that's, he, that's good because if anything falls, he's got us covered, right? That's right. That's he's the right. Household, he's the breadwinner. He's the smart one. <laughs> That's right. I'm not, I'm not even mad at him. Tamika <laughs> says, um, yes, amen. My son is the same way. Sometimes I'm like, I will pay half. Let me tell you, I, I can just go ahead and tell you, I, is, is piss a bad word? Well, I'm going to say I was pissed. <laughs> oh, sorry. I say it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> My children, they, their money burned holes in their pockets, they socks, they jockey, <laughs> give them two dollars and they're gonna find some cookies, candy, or something <laughs> to spin it on. But you know, I you know I, I I'm sure I didn't do the best job on teaching them how to keep it. Um but, but sometimes you, know, you gotta realize that your best was your best because you can't teach them anything that you wasn't taught yourself. Exactly, exactly. And and that that is, I think, a huge lesson in your book and in, in, in the best. One thing I noticed about your title, it doesn't say finding the best version of me. It said it is the best version of me. And I think it's a good thing for people to understand that who you are today 
<laughs> it's the best version of you today. And well, it may not be who I'm going to be five years from now. Exactly. I'm going to get better. Exactly. And I, so for me, that was a huge takeaway um, thus far is embracing me now and knowing that today is the best version of Angel that has ever lived. Now, will she improve? Prayerfully. <laughs> <laughs> you understand, but yeah. day, I'm not finding the best me. I am the best me today. And that was it. Like I said, it was a huge takeaway from your book. We are, listen, we are, we are way out of time at this point, but I could probably talk to you like <laughs> forever and ever and ever. But before we go, I would like for you to, if you have any wise woman words for the people that you would like to leave with them before we leave for tonight? You can share it right now. Well, I would just like to encourage you that where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow or even the next day. So just always remember that there's always room for improvement. And sometimes when we dig down deep inside, those things that we know we need to change or we want to change, you just have to do it. Like Nike says, just do it. And the quicker that you find the root problem and you rip that Band-Aid off, you will find the best version of yourself. You know, I healed so much even through writing the book that I it took me 40-something years to love who I am today. And it was because of my own bondage and because I allowed the enemy to um, talk and whisper in my ear and I believe those things. Mm -hmm. So I think I encourage everybody, um, you know, even those who are non-believers, you know, just, you know, search within yourself, find God. And I, I promise it's that relationship with him that changed everything with me. Um, and the, the close, closer I grew to him, the more I changed. You know, I even had my sister to ask me one time. She's like, what kind of drugs does your doctor have you on? <laughs> You know, and I'm like, I'm not on any drugs. What are you talking about? She's like, because you're not the same person. I said, oh, that's a little bit of Jesus. Get you yeah. <laughs> you okay. Know, but really, that's the secret. Yeah. A little bit of Jesus, whole lot of Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> and a great really amount of grace, right? Yes. yes. I feel you. So listen, everybody. The best version of me. This is what the book looks like. You got yours. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so this is what the book looks like. It's a beautiful cover. Um, like I said, I have, I purchased the ebook version so that I can read when I'm on the go. Um, I have a tangible copy when I up late night and I want to read and highlight and things of that nature. Um, this is the Speak Up Sis book club book for the month of February. We are all reading this book right now if you are part of speak up sis book club hey um i hope that you are you're reading or at least getting ready to read if you would like to be a part of speak up sis book club please join us um if you support independent self-published authors and you like reading and discussing books we would love to have you and we are reading this for the month of February. So everybody, you can go to speakupsis.com slash bookshelf and you will find the best version of me listed. And you can go ahead and grab you a copy. How can the people get in contact with you if they would like to just talk to you or have you on their show or even do some transformational life coaching with you? Well, you can contact me at tanyawilliams01 at gmail.com, and I will respond to you. If you're on social media, I'm on social media as well. I have um, Tanya Williams Life Coach page, or you can come on my personal page and contact me as well. Um, to book me for any kind of life coaching, I'm on mymentor.live, but um, you're surely to get a response if you just email me as well. Okay, great. And you all can see scrolling at the bottom her email address go ahead and jot that down and give her um you know give her a shout okay so with that everybody i'd like to thank you all for tuning in again for speak up sis 
Talk Radio. I am your host, Angel Charmaine, and this is the place where authors, especially Christian authors, have an opportunity to share the word of their testimony through their books to inspire your stories. We are here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. with a new author. So make sure you join us next Wednesday for another amazing Speak Up Sis bookshelf author. Thank you, Tanya, so much Thank for your you. time. And listen, I just I just love you already, and I haven't even met you, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome, sis. You take care. And everybody else, we will see you all next time. Bye.